Today, we will be exploring the murder case of Jill Dando, a well-known TV presenter who was shot and killed outside her house in West London in 1999. The case, which shocked the nation, attracted attention from the public and police alike, and an extensive investigation was launched to capture the killer. Despite numerous leads and potential suspects, the case remained unsolved for over a year until the arrest of Barry Michael George. In this video, we will delve into the details of the case, exploring the evidence and theories surrounding the murder and discussing the eventual conviction of George. On Monday, April 26, 1999, in Fulham, West London, a woman's screams prompted a neighbor, Richard Hughes, to investigate. He saw a well-dressed man outside his neighbor's house, and when he looked closer, he found his neighbor, Jill Dando, unconscious and covered in blood. Dando died on the way to the hospital due to a close-range gunshot wound to the head. Dando was a popular TV personality and had recently gotten engaged. She was hosting several successful television programs, including Crime Watch, where she investigated unsolved criminal investigations. She had also confided in a colleague that she had received threatening phone calls and letters. Three weeks after her murder, police had no suspects and no motive for the killing. The investigation was featured on Crime Watch four days before Dando's funeral. Her family, wedding guests, and fiancé mourned her at Clarence Park Baptist Church on May 21, 1999. The investigation, called Operation Oxborough, began immediately, led by Detective Chief Inspector Hamish Campbell and involving numerous criminologists, psychologists, and forensic experts. The killer was believed to be either a stalker or a hitman, given the execution-style manner in which Dando was murdered. Several witnesses came forward, reporting seeing a strange man in the area before and after the murder. A composite sketch of the chief suspect was created, but it failed to produce new leads. After 28 days, the trail of the killer had gone cold. A new inspector, Detective Chief Superintendent Brian Edwards, replaced Campbell. On May 27, 1999, a funeral director was taken into custody, but later released after having no connection to the case. On June 16, 1999, sources revealed that it was unlikely Dando had been stalked and that the crime was believed to have been carried out by a professional criminal. In July 1999, forensic experts publicly disclosed that they had discovered unique markings on the bullet casing found at the murder scene, believed to be a trademark, habit, or idiosyncrasy of the killer. Investigators appealed to the public, specifically to ammunition and gun dealers, for information concerning the strange markings. The Daily Mail and Sun newspapers offered rewards for further information leading to the capture of Dando's murderer. One hundred days had passed since her death, and the police and investigators continued to search for vital clues, but no one had been charged for the crime. In the weeks leading up to the murder, two men had shown a fixation with Dando, with one attempting to change her telephone to his name and another trying to access her private documents. Police speculated that the murder was most likely carried out by a stalker. Stalking is defined as the willful, malicious, and repeated following or harassment of another person and is a growing problem that has gained media attention due to several high-profile cases. While it is commonly believed to be a phenomenon that affects only females, both men and women can be victims of stalking. One in 12 women and one in 45 men are stalked at some point in their lives, and 90% of women killed by their partners had first been stalked. Stalkers are mostly middle-aged, unemployed, or underemployed, and develop pathological attachments to their victims. They often follow a predictable pattern of behavior, beginning with infatuation-like feelings and eventually progressing to contact with the person of interest. Rejection triggers a delusion through which the stalker projects their own feelings onto the victim. Stalkers tend to be more intelligent than other criminals, but often hide their shame with anger, leading to the desire to control or injure the person being stalked. The FBI identifies four distinct types of stalkers, non-domestic, organized, delusional, and domestic. Although many stalkers threaten their victims, only a small percentage actually carry out their threats. 
There is no way to differentiate between those who make idle threats and those who actually follow through, so it is important to take all threats seriously. After a year-long investigation and over 2,000 potential suspects, police arrested a 40-year-old man on May 25, 2000, whose name was initially withheld from the public. The suspect was held in police custody for 84 hours and eventually appeared at the West London Magistrates Court on May 29, 2000, where police asked for an extension to hold him in custody to question him further. Police began to focus on the suspect following an interview with him concerning Dando's murder. Surveillance cameras were set up outside his residence and circumstantial evidence was taken from his home. The suspect denied ever knowing Dando or causing her physical harm. Several days following the arrest, the world was told the suspect's name was Barry Bulsara. However, police later discovered that this was not his real name. Eventually, the police learned the suspect's real identity was Barry Michael George. George often assumed false identities and claimed to be related to Queen's lead singer, Freddie Mercury, whose original surname was Bulsara. Mercury's family denied any affiliation with George. George's home, located half a mile from Dando's residence, was searched by police. Investigators lacked important evidence needed to build a solid case, including a motive, eyewitnesses, and a murder weapon. Many items were removed from George's residence and used as evidence in one of Britain's most publicized trials of the century. In April 2001, the trial of Barry George began at the Old Bailey for the murder of Jill Dando. The trial was adjourned twice before finally starting on May 4, 2001. The prosecution described George as a man obsessed with fame, firearms, and the military. George had used false identities and joined a pistol club in 1982 using the name Steve Majors, which was in honor of a character from a popular TV show. George had an unusual interest in the BBC and collected articles and photos of employees from the staff newspaper, which included Jill Dando, who he claimed not to know. However, he had shown enormous sympathy for her following her death and actively sought letters of condolence. A witness named Sally Mason testified that George had told her he was present at the murder scene of Dando, contradicting his earlier statement to the police. The trial lasted five weeks and captivated news audiences worldwide. During the second week of the trial, the prosecution presented evidence of a coat found in George's apartment which contained discharge residue particles, similar to the one worn by the suspect seen near the scene of the murder. Forensic scientists found a match between the particles found on the coat and those found on Dando's clothing and at the crime scene. A witness named Susan Mays testified that she saw the defendant across the street from Dando's house on the morning of the murder, wearing a black suit and a white shirt. During the third week of the trial, jurors were taken on a tour of the places involved in the investigation, including the homes of Dando and George and the surrounding areas. Witnesses testified about finding Dando's body on her front step and the lack of suspicious activity except for a neighbor who saw someone near the crime scene. The prosecution also showed videotaped interviews with George, where he denied killing Dando and claimed to have never met her. The trial was marked by these key pieces of evidence and witness accounts, which the prosecution used to argue that George was guilty of the murder. During the trial, the defense attorney, Michael Mansfield, argued that Dando had been assassinated by a professional Yugoslavian hitman in retaliation for NATO bombings in Belgrade. Mansfield claimed that Dando's murder was a hit ordered by Arkan, the leader of the Tigers. The arguments made by the defense focused on the hitman theory and extended into the fifth week. Mansfield also presented a witness who claimed to have seen a man in a Range Rover car parked near Dando's house on the morning of the murder. The witness believed the man on the phone in the car had been attempting to attract her attention, but there was no evidence linking George to the car. After closing statements by both sides, George was found guilty of the murder and sentenced to life in prison. However, the jury was not told about George's previous criminal record, which included crimes such as assaults against women, impersonating a police officer, molestation, and indecent assault. 
1983, George had been arrested for trespassing on the property of Princess Diana and was found armed with two knives, rope, combat paraphernalia, and a gas mask. This information suggested that George was a more threatening and disturbed character than what his defense team had initially portrayed. George's former wife also described their marriage as violent and terrifying. Barry George was cleared of all charges relating to the murder of Jill Dando on July 31, 2009, after a retrial based on evidence raised by his defense team. Three appellate court judges had questioned the veracity of forensic evidence leading to his conviction. The retrial jury, like the first jury, never heard about George's prior sex offense conviction, record of an attempted rape, and three arrests for indecent assault, or the Kensington Palace break-in. George celebrated his exoneration with supporters and was likely to receive £1 million in compensation for his time incarcerated, another £100,000 for his story, and could sue for wrongful imprisonment. In a positive move, the Jill Dando Institute of Crime Science was established to assist in crime prevention in memory of Dando. Do you think that Barry George was innocent? Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear what you have to say. Also, consider giving this video a like if you liked it. That really helps with the algorithm. Additionally, consider subscribing to the channel for more true crime. Till next time, signing off. This has been Christina.